All right, everybody, Canuck here. Welcome to another critique. Uh, today we are playing Crooked Arrow, the tour version. This is from J. Ray Gunn, one of my newer designers. He's actually signed up in the ultimate designer tier, uh, so the very top tier, so I really appreciate the support. Again, any more on memberships and all that, you can uh, visit my YouTube page and hit that join link next to subscribe and uh, get all the details there. So, um, Crooked Arrow, uh, first of all, right off the bat, he's done a really nice job of kind of promoting his course, which is something, a service I offer in the Ultimate Design tier to kind of help people out. But he's on PC, he's able to take pictures. I can tell he's on PC because I can see his name. Okay, if it just said TGC member, that means they're designing on a different console than what you own. Uh, so I can tell he's on PC. And um, I'm just gonna show you kind of a, a very, very good job of selling your course and making it stick out. So over on the TGC Tours thread or form in the completed courses section, he's done a really nice job uh, with his form post. So he's got a little logo, a course description. He's even gone out of the way of making a little scorecard, which is really neat. Oh, Shooter McGavin's the golf course professional. I love that. Um, yeah, and then some nice uh, stylized edited pictures little bit extra color in there which which is cool um some really nice looking pictures here so uh really kind of get, gets you excited to play the course some crazy waterfalls and stuff like that so definitely a cool little uh fantasy course here and then a hole by hole description which i'll have beside me as i'm playing around on this course so uh the designer's given me a few notes things that uh i need to look out for and stuff like that so i'll try to catch what i can again this is a first playthrough for me we'll go black tees and pin two um so yeah i'm gonna point out as much as i can i do miss things and a lot of what i say can be sometimes fairly subjective so not everything i necessarily say goes so my usual little disclaimer as we start these critiques so he's even gone out of the way of naming each of the holes so the first hole at crooked arrow tour is called navajo the opening hole introduces you to Crooked Arrow with a medium-length dogleg left par 4. A generous fairway will collect most straight shots off the tee. Players attempting to cut the corner must try and avoid the left side fairway bunker and unforgiving desert terrain beyond. A well-placed drive leaves just a short wedge shot into a relatively flat green guarded by bunkers on both sides. So, uh, before we hit our first tee shot, just a few comments on kind of the general kind of look of the course. We'll just do a quick little flyover. So he's gone with the step theme. He says this is his very first course, and I would not highly discourage using step theme uh, as the first one, as it's a tricky one to pull off, but uh, he's done a really nice job, I feel. There's a lot of open space, and but, you know, that's just kind of comes with the territory with, with uh, step or desert or whatever he's used here. Um... But yeah, we'll talk a little bit about maybe how you can fill up kind of these open kind of spaces. But for the most part, he's done a pretty good job. And this looks like a really crazy, we got holes way up here, don't we? Yeah, we do. That's insane. So that's kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of an old course I did. It was called the Nomad. It had crazy elevation changes like this. So uh, some neat stuff here. Definitely more fantasy, though. So we have to keep that in mind as we're as we're going through. So... This first tee shot, um, I would say the camber, so how this thing slopes, is far too steep. Um, I always kind of like to use the idea of if there was an actual real-life greenskeeper on this course, could they actually mow that without breaking their ankles? I don't know if they could. So uh, I think that just needs to be smoothed out a bit. You can still get that nice little camber, but I think it's just a little bit too extreme. Some odd choices in the planting. Now, I am not someone who lives, you know, in like Scottsdale or anything like that. So I can't really comment too much on how these courses look in real life. Hopefully, I've got a trip planned out to Scottsdale next year. Hopefully, COVID doesn't ruin it. But I'm looking forward to seeing it because I love building in this theme. So, uh, but some weird ideas on these trees, like the willows and seems like just a, a real mishmash of trees. I'm sure it quite quite fits. Looks like the designer's kind of taking a little bit of everything. Um, not really a con consistent theme, but we'll see. So we're going to try to hit our first shot here. 
which is not a bad one. And we're going to, I think, be short of these bunkers. These bunkers aren't too bad in terms of size. They look pretty good. That one's kind of carving into the fairway a little bit. People know my stance on that. I'm not a huge fan of that. I know it exists in real life. It just, the way that little lip of rough kind of sticks out, I just don't like that look personally. But no, I kind of like the trees at the back here. Kind of give a little bit of a sheltered green here. I would be a little bit more adventurous with my shapes of my bunkers, I think. Um, just some more defined edges, I think. These just kind of look almost a little sad, <laughs> these bunkers, but yeah, not bad. All right. That mouse out of the way. Terrible shot there. Could have been a lot closer. Okay, let's try to get this in the ballpark. No, we missed that. Greens look to be in pretty good shape. Seem to be pretty fair. Nothing too ridiculous in terms of breaks or anything like that. Okay. So yeah, a lot of bare space if you kind of look up in the corners here. Bare space everywhere. That is the hardest part for step is to kind of try to... I mean, I like to eliminate it as best I can, otherwise it looks a little barren, and you can hide things, so. Um, he's done a nice job here, so he's planted a few nice things here that I really like. So I really like kind of this rock slidey area. He's done an excellent job with that, actually. Um, some weird planting on this bunker. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but... Oh, we gotta read our cold description. This one's called Tiwa. Tiwa? going to be a lot of names I'm going to butcher here. The ideal drive hugs the left side of the fairway, avoiding the waste bunker to the right. Okay. i got a few other ideas for waste bunkers, but that's... Yeah, okay, I get it. Depending on the direction of the wind, the player may want to club down off the tee or risk driving the ball into the unmaintained rock slide area, which I think is excellently done. A mid-range iron second shot leads to a scorable green protected by large bunkers at the front and rear. Beware the rock slide area is marked as out of bounds. Okay. I like this tee shot. It's actually a nicely designed hole. Yeah, I, I gotta be a little bit worried about my driver. Um, yeah, that waste bunker's a little... I think I would have brought put a little bit more in it. And just these kind of, these little bushes or pieces of grass just hanging out by themselves just looks a little... It just doesn't look natural for me. So... But I love the rock slide area there, I think. Designer's done a really good job. So I am going to hit driver and try to get as close to the edge as I can. He's built a nice little bridge there. Okay. Okay, bunkers are good, but these bunkers are a little bit better. A little bit larger. Uh, depth is okay. Maybe a touch deep, but not bad. Uh, you have to be careful with these high mountains, especially with lighting. You don't want it to be completely dark. You know, about half the green is is in the shade and half of it's not. Um, just something to be aware of. Having shadows on your green is okay, but if it gets to be a huge amount, then it can be a, a little bit too much. <clears throat> okay. And we will make our par. Okay, not a bad hole. I like how that hole is designed there. Okay, we head to the third. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna just skip the hole names because I'm terrible with this. <laughs> uh, so hole three. Wow, this is a big downhiller one. A near 100 foot drop makes this par three much shorter than advertised. Players will need to judge both wind speed and direction in order to safely navigate their ball to the two-tiered green while avoiding the bear claw bunkers to the right and left. Okay, now, 96 feet is a lot. Oh, I like the bear claw bunkers, huh? That's, that's, that's nicely done. 96 feet's tough to pull off in terms of a good-looking tee shot, but I can see the below. Um, he's done a really good job with elevation, to be quite honest. Now that lake's not really in play, but 
I, I, I don't mind it there at all. Uh, then you really got to do the math. How much you going to club down here? Maybe a five iron? Great tee shot here. Great tee shot. This could be really good, ladies and gentlemen. We're all over this. Oh, what a shot. Absolutely beautiful there. We judged that distance perfectly. Great hole. You always are a little bit... It's 100 foot drops are hard to pull off. So I think the designer did a, a very nice job on that one. So yeah, that was good. I would avoid too many of those, though. Depends on what your course is like, though. Fantasy courses, sure. But, you know, within reason. Hole four. We got a short little par four here. An aggressive play calls for a high draw up and around the left-hand hillside while trying to hold the thin green which angles left to right and slopes away from the tees. Motor conservative players will take an easy driver or three-wood into the fairway beyond the rock monument, leaving themselves with plenty of green to work with to place a short wedge shot close to the hole. Oh, we're not a conservative player, but... Okay, we've got like a little rock monument. That's very like Troon-ish, right? think i think troon has like these rock monuments stuff like that so i i kind of see where we're getting that from again you've done a good job of planting kind of in and around the course um the outer course stuff again that's hard to plant just because there's so much of it right um yeah it it really depends on what the planting meter is at but you know even just a few well-placed uh hills and trees to kind of hide a little bit more of that uh, can be really helpful. Okay, I like this whole design very much. I think we are going to just launch, see if we can launch it over. Yeah. Now let's play it how it's designed here. Let's go this way. But yeah, I mean, we could have planted a little bit around here. Oh, we're going to bounce it off this monument here, maybe. Uh-oh. Going to be an awkward little shot. Oh, off the rock. Okay. Okay. Uh, bunkers are bad. I feel like the bunkers have been a little bit inconsistent in terms of size and shape and stuff like that, but it's not terrible. Okay. We've got a birdie putt here. Oh, so close. It's fine. We'll tap her in. I like that short four. I'm really enjoying the hole design. The layout's been good. Um, four really nice put together, nicely put together holes. Okay. Oh, oh goodness. Okay. Okay. Uh, 508 yards, par five. I'm like, what? Okay, but now I see. Uh, this deceptively long par 5 plays downhill to a fairway split by the waste area and back uphill to a large green bunkered on all sides. Only the longest hitters off the tees will be able to place their drive far enough into the fairway to give themselves a chance to play a high cut around the foothill to reach the screen in two. Beware, the foothills to the right are marked out of bounds. Other players will try to hug the right side of the fairway off the tees and give themselves a workable layup to the second fairway. Catch your breath on the green and take your first great view of Angel Wing Falls. There's Angel Wing Falls up there. Okay, I think this hole's trying to do a little too much. I... Here, I'm just... The second shot's going to be really awkward, so I'm trying to think about wind conditions. If we had a huge headwind here... You know, that might put me here. I guess I could still make a second shot to get over all that waste area. Um, this is a quirky hole. We'll just put it at that. Planting's nice. Uh-oh. That's going to be an issue. Oh, okay. We rolled back into play. Okay, it's not as uphill as I thought it was. I thought it was going to be way uphill, but this isn't too bad. Retaining walls going on here. You know, that's where I would have definitely put it. Retaining walls are actually... 
quite nicely done. You get that kind of little bump there, but it's not bad. You might want to double or triple up those retaining walls, but the curve in there is really nice. A uh, nice clean look. Cart paths haven't really commented on it. They are a little wobbly. As you can kind of see in here, up here. Minor, but they're there. All right, we're going to lay up. I don't know if I love this hole. It's, this hole, I think, is doing a little bit too much, but... Uh, down the hill, okay. But again, that's a personal opinion. Take that. Get in there, baby. Ooh, close. Yeah. Okay. In with a par. Deceptively tricky little par five. And long, as as he said. The sixth hole. 369 yards. Another tee shot that gives the player options based on the wind and aggressiveness of play. The screen can be reached off the tees with only the longest and most accurately placed drives. Players going for the green in one. In one. How are we getting there in one? Well, I guess he maybe could with a big, strong headwind. Anyway. Um... Let's avoid the waste area bunker providing the front of the green. A more strategic drive will reach the far end of the raised fairway, giving the player a good look into a two-tiered green, which slopes left to right. Beware the waste area is marked as yellow snakes and must be played as a water hazard. I mean... No, but I get it. Yeah, you'd have to kind of do a drop probably in there, but you can't actually force the game to make it play as a water hazard, which is a shame. This is a nice hole. I like this one. Um, some good looks here. Planting is good. Tee shot is great. I would have maybe planted them maybe a little bit more kind of around here. But it's nice. Like I said, I still think the planting is a little bit all over the place. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this is going to be big trouble. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we're going to take a drop here. I think we're going to take a drop. Yeah, I think we're just going to re-tee on this one. Yikes. All right, there we go. That's better. A little too much on that one. Okay. Yeah, some weird trees here, I think. And I, I think I would, those bushes, I think I would have sunk down to the ground a little bit more. But yeah, I think just with texture on, on the step theme, um, you kind of get all this heavy rough, and then it just abruptly ends, and you're right into, like, bare desert for kind of no reason. I would have kind of maybe stretched out the... have a little bit more green on this course and a little less brown. But that's, again, another personal point of view for me all right well we struggled on that one it was a poor drive that led to a double bogey okay we reached the seventh it is the signature par four provides a breathtaking view of the caballo valley and angel wing falls in the distance an elevated tee shot may have players swing for the fences in order to cross the river splitting the fairway and dramatically reducing the length of this hole, however, an accurate drive to the center of the fairway beyond the waste bunker will give most players the best look into the green, which plays at the base of Angel Wing Falls, where the area is to the right of the river beyond the waste is marked out of bounds. Okay, so another really steep or really large uh, dog leg here. Again, that waste bunker, kind of same comments I had on the earlier hole. That bunker just kind of seems squished in. Not really loving that shape. Um, as you can see, the waterfall is the focal point here, and he's done a really nice job with it. Yeah, some nice planting in and around. I would like to have seen it stretched out maybe a little bit more, some planting in here just to make it a little bit more lush and dominant, but, you know, he's done a pretty good job with the rocks and stuff, so... It's 
good. I think we can go for it. What do we think? Mm, maybe not. I'm just going to play down here. Hole looks great. Into the really nice lighting here. Mm, that needs a kick left. Going to get one. Still going to lay into the heavy rough, though. Oh, yeah, good. Nice work with the water features. The waterfalls are nicely done. Most part. They're done nicely. I mean, a little bit of a... Uh, I would have had the rushing water in here, too, just if I was to be really nitpicky. Get her up the hill here. Come on, big bounce. Not quite. Nope. All right. It's a fun little hole. Definitely, you can see we're swinging towards the fantasy side of things, right? Which is fine. All right, we're right under the waterfall for this hole. Playing alongside the rushing waters of Angel Wing Falls, the tee shot requires directional accuracy in order to avoid the plant life surrounding the green to the left and the trio of bunkers protecting the green to the right. An inaccurate tee shot may leave the player with a difficult chip out of the rough or a stroke penalty as the terrain slopes drastically away from the right out of bounds and out of bounds. Fortunately, the L-shaped green will hold most shots that land on her surface. So yeah, nice little dramatic waterfall views. I mean, he's tucked the waterfall really tight up against the rocks, which a lot of designers tend to miss. So I think he's done a pretty nice job with the waterfall. Having it that close to the playing area, you can kind of get some ugly looks, but uh, it's a pretty good waterfall. Uh, in terms of how this hole plays, I mean, I like this kind of narrow look off the tee. That's a bit of a tough pin, just it's right on the edge there. And that's, we got to keep it to the left. Rolling down the hill. Uh, I think the wind's going to carry that a little too far left. Look at that cart path going all the way up the mountain there. Uh, no fences either. It's scary. Again, for a maybe added touch, I would have fenced that. Ooh, close. But I'm getting real nitpicky now. All right, we got her in for par. Tricky pin placement there. All right, now we're going to snake our way all the way up, and now we're at the very top of the mountain, it looks like. Hole 9, at nearly 3,000 feet in elevation. Tees on hole 9 offer the best view down into the Caballo Valley and the rest of the front nine. Driving from atop Angel Wing Falls, players must try and hug the right side of the fairway to avoid risking any shots tumbling down the mountainside. A long second shot plays up to an elevated green play protected by all sides on bunkers. Any shot that reaches the green in two gives the players their best chance in eagle putt. Be sure to grab a refreshment from the halfway house. Make use of the nearby facilities to make your way to trip down the mountain. Nice. So I get a question a lot like, oh, does the ninth hole have to match up with the clubhouse? Like, does it have to come back to the clubhouse? No, it absolutely does not. Not all golf courses do. Where is the clubhouse? It's miles away. It's somewhere down there. Who cares? It doesn't have to be. Um, I like this par five. I think I'm going to, I should be able to cut this corner though. This Bridgestone driver. Yeah. Looks like I kind of skirt by most of the hazards there with the long driver. Okay. Pretty short par five, so. I kind of like the halfway house that you've done here. Nice. All right, we got to get up the hill. A lot of side hill lies. I think generally sculpting wise, I think your fairways could have used a bit more touch up. It's, just, it's very slopey. It's not extreme, like even the greens, too, um, in some places. It's just very um, hard to find a flat lie. I, I have the same kind of issues on my courses, too, sometimes, but all lies don't have to be flat, but I feel like I'm getting a lot of real, like, red slope lies. Boom. 
We are even par through the front with two birdies and a double bogey on that sixth hole with that bad drive. All right, let's move to the back nine. Perched atop trees extending from the mountainside, hole 10 plays 150 feet straight down into a very generously, I guess it's 170 feet, I don't know. Anyway, very generously sized island green. New players to the course may want to consider clubbing down two or even three clubs depending on wind speed and direction. Once the player is safely on the largely flat green, a two putt for par is a great score. Maybe I'm playing off a different tee. It's hard for me to say. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, not a bad looking tee shot here. Again, with a big downhill, but this play is pretty good. Again, this would have benefited from a little bit more planting, I think, in here. Would have looked magnificent, but... Hard to tell how much plant meter a designer has looks like we're crawling our way way up the mountain again oh look at the i've got the elevation just dialed in on these big par threes great shot there really nice little touches in terms of like tournament objects and stuff like that i think they're in pretty good places uh some of them are kind of in the middle of the desert which is isn't great but okay 13. 12. No, 11. <laughs> I was like, what hole are we on? 11. Hole 11 plays along the backside of Angel Wing Falls and challenges the player with a blind tee shot around the hills to the left of a green and nestles into the mountainside. An accurate draw into the, around the left-hand hills can attempt to hold the fairway, but a more conservative three-wood off the tee will provide the largest landing area and a good look into the left to right sloping green. A real narrow tee shot here, but I like it. Uh, looks good. And then we got, it looks like we got a waterfall flowing the other way now. Hey, I kind of like how this kind of carves its way through the mountains here. Pretty narrow. Just trying to find, like, how do I hold the fairway here? We're going to try. Oh, well, we're going to kick it off the mountain. <laughs> I guess this is how you hit the fairway. Oh, off the cart path. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whoa. All right. That's a way to do it, I guess. Green's not too bad. A bit slopey. All right. Green complexes have been like, you know, greens and bunkers, you know, stuff around the green has been okay. Nothing mind blowing. Uh, but for a first course, I mean, this is crazy good for a first course. Oh, no. I think it would be a bit too extreme to host an event, I would say. But yeah, it's uh, it's a fun it's a fun track. It's a lot of fun. I love courses like these. Hole 12, relatively straightforward, par 4, features a pinched fairway near the landing zone just 15 yards wide. Players must navigate both the thin fairway and the fairway bunkers to leave themselves the best look into a three-tiered green protected by waste bunkers at the front and to the rear. Okay. Yeah, actually a pretty straightforward little par 4 here. Bit of a breather. Again, pretty barren up on the left and the right. Um, and yeah, I think I just like hills... Covering those with patches of grass, bushes, not not choked with them, but you know, enough that you can see that something's going on there, I would say. It's just a little a little barren, but I've seen a lot worse. The areas around the green are planted nicely, and that's really what's important, so. Right. Ooh, tricky shot out here. I think I'm gonna have to club up. Might even have to club up again. Needs a bounce. Okay. Bunkers, yeah, I think are a little bit deep. I would say in the back there, I'm just taking a quick peek. Bunkers are a little bit deep. Oh, get in there. Oh, ho, ho. there's a good shot. Get in on 12. Birdies in the last three holes. 
The design has been a lot of fun. It really has. There hasn't been a head scratcher of a hole. Maybe that first part five is a bit of an odd one, but uh, they're they're more definitely more fantasy based, but they're not like insane. They're not like what the heck is going on here. So that's that's been good. This is a huge downhiller here. I was trying to wonder when we're starting to go down the mountain. Looks like this hole is the start. This is hole 13. Your eyes do not deceive you. The fairway down and to the left of the trees of the tees is in play for those wishing to risk it all and gives themselves a level second shot into the green. Okay, I like that. Okay, so it looks like this fairway over here. However, players must be aware that the desert area surrounding the split fairway is marked out of bounds. The more straightforward option is to land your tee shot off the right-hand fairway while you leave a challenging second shot nearly 50 feet to a very scorable green. Okay, so I like choice off the tee, and this definitely provides it. What an odd shot. I like it. Yeah, you can play safe here, but again, if you go down here, this gives you a level. Yeah, I like the risk-reward here a lot. I think most people will go down here, though. Let's see. Might even be long. Oh, it'd be nice if I hit the fairway, but... Oh, maybe, if I get a kick. Oh, just short of the fair fairway bunker. That is perfect. That's going to just leave me a little pitch onto the green here. Okay. That bunker in the back. Is a little snake, a little thin and snaky. It's okay. It's too deep though. Again, it's just a little bit too deep. Okay. Boom. We're on a bit of a roll here. Three birdies on the last four holes. We took the gamble to hit that uh, long ball, and it definitely paid off for us. 14. This dogleg left par 4 requires a gentle draw across the lake into a sloping fairway between the fairway bunkers. Your second shot plays slightly downhill to a green which slopes away from the player. An accurate shot into the green gives a player a great chance of birdie on this scorable hole. A lot of water to clear. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, again, I've just to I toned down the fairways a touch. But, I mean, for a first course, this is pretty darn good. It kind of reminds me of, like I said earlier, I mentioned it. I built a course called the Nomad, and I, I kind of... I get the similar vibes from it, so and I love that course. It's actually a... Uh, an official course in TGC 2019. Although it kind of got messed up. There were a whole bunch of cactuses on it that I didn't put there. All right, the planting. Yeah, again, these bushes, I think a little big, a little varied. I don't know if they fit the theme. Um, yeah. Oh, another big putt. As we are just ripping this back nine up here. I like that. Plays along the lake here. 15. Another par 5. Offering the players choices off the tee. A straightforward drive, or a straight drive towards the green must hold the elevated right side of the fairway without entering bordering vegetation in order to give the player their best chance at reaching the green. In two, players choosing the safer left-hand side will have a simple but blind layup into a wide landing area in front of the green. Errant shots may reach the small water reservoir to the left or the inhospitable desert terrain to the right. Adventurous players may be rewarded with an eagle putt, but a two putt for par is a good result. Okay. Yeah, our, um, just seeing out uh, that that is pretty sloped. That's almost, uh, you got to hit it right on on that. I don't think this is as good of a risk reward option here. Um, yeah, you get the straight on look, but I, I maybe it's just the clubs I have, but I am definitely not going for that. 
So I'm going to play it to here. Not sure if that one works as well as the last that par 4 did, but it might just be the clubs I'm using. That's not good. All right, well, we're going to have to hit it over this hill here. Good clear it. Okay. Very slopey fairway again. Green shapes are okay. Oh, that's terrible. Low tempo. Okay, kick though. Chip in a putt, hopefully. Not too bad. No. We were rolling and then we abruptly hit the brakes with the bogey. Okay, final three holes. Looking forward to this here. Been a fun, a lot of fun. The drivable dogleg par four, the postage stamp green is nestled down to beside the forward hillside and offers a great risk reward shot for those willing to take chances off the tee. In 2015, Crooked Arrow's own designer, I don't even, Riordan, Riordan? I feel like that's like an Irish name. Oh, Reagan scored an albatross for the back tees during the inaugural opening round. Players not wishing to risk a bogey can play a three or five foot off the tees, leaving themselves a very good chance to still make birdie. Oh yeah, okay, so over the hill. Yeah, small green. This is what I would kind of expect on a reachable far four. I feel like we should try to see if we can recreate what O'Regan did. I, I I think we've got uh I don't think we got the right club though. Let's try to play a slow. That. Uh, still gonna be long though. Whoa. Yeah, we should have just laid up. Well, actually, that doesn't give us too difficult to chip. So yeah, again, here's a really stark contrast. Lots of vegetation and then just nothing. But again, a tough a tough look to pull off, especially as a new designer. Um, a lot of very experienced designers won't even touch this theme. So um, as a new new designer to take it on, got to give him a lot of credit. And he's done a really good job of creating a really cool desert fantasy course. There's a nice chip and birdie. We got two holes left here. Beautiful. Okay. Hole 17. This straightforward par 3 plays to a green angled to the right and away from the player requiring a high fade in order to reach the furthest pin placements and hold the green. A great shot off the tees offer the player their best chance of taking a birdie into a challenging finish in the hole. Play a little high fade. I, I mean, I like how the, the designers brought in shim shot shaping. Um, not forcing it down your throat, but it's there and it's an option. So I, I do like that as part of the design. Um, this is a nice little shot. Sight lines are good. Even gone to the making of the uh, little retaining wall around the tees, which I think look pretty good too. So a lot of work put into this course, you can tell. Ah, shank. No. All right. See if we can get up and down for par. Not an ideal shot here. But we are able to get up and down for par. As we head to the final hole. A crooked arrow. Nestled alongside a scenic pond and featuring the rock final rock monument dedicated to the Native American tribes that originally settled in the Caballo Valley, this lengthy par 5 bends slightly left and plays to a well-protected lion's mouth green. Players will try to land their drive to the right of the fairway, wide fairway, giving themselves an elevated look into the green. The fairway slopes right to left towards the water, so players attempting to shorten the hole must avoid rolling their drive into the hazard. Depending on wind and pin placement, the green is reachable in two with a heroic second shot that it can attempt to run up the slope fairway and onto the green. Pins protected by the deep green side bunker may require a well-placed layup to give the player their best shot at landing their third shot close. Try not to be intimidated by the onlookers sitting at the clubhouse views. 
viewing decks as you line up hopefully your final putt of the day awesome yeah yeah this is a classic kind of looking 18th hole again pretty barren off to the right which is a bit of a bummer but the on course stuff is pretty good oh i pulled that that could be in some trouble here rolling into the bunker Typical me on a par five, just struggling to find the green. All right, we're gonna hit it over the water. Sneaking up the hill, yeah, it's a bit of a... I like how the green's perched uphill, maybe a little much, but it's not bad, it's pretty good. I like your kind of clubhouse surroundings at the back there. Oh, a little comebacker there, I like it. All right, let's see if we can make this finish with a birdie. Get in there. Did I hit it hard enough? I did not. Embarrassing. Knock it in for par. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're done here at Crooked Arrow. And I mean, for a first course, taking on the step theme and taking on a bit more of a wild fantasy course is bold. And I think it was handled pretty well, in my opinion. Um, a really fun layout, um, some nice risk reward opportunities, um, like I said, some good shot shaping potential, but it's again, not forced upon you too much, which is good. Um, I really enjoyed the layout overall. I thought, um, you know, most of the off course kind of look was mixed. I would say, I think the planting was a little wild in places and it didn't quite know its identity i would say it was just kind of trees of real different types kind of everywhere not sure if it worked for me personally uh fairways definitely needed some work i think those could have been ironed out a little bit uh still for keeping that slope but not to the extreme that we had and then the greens were just kind of okay the bunkers were a little bit deep but kind of just okay um but yeah, layout a little bit wild. This course definitely would get approved on TGC Tours. I'm pretty sure it has. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure what it's been marked yet, but I don't know if this course would host a tournament. I think it's just a little too wild for that. Um, a few strange kind of holes, but uh, overall, for a first course, I would say this is an excellent job. I feel like the design, this designer, if he keeps going, his probably second, third, Maybe fourth course is going to be like a, whoa, okay, who's this guy? He's going to be a showstopper. So I really look forward to watching this guy um, and checking things out. Oh, there's Phil. <laughs> We're going to turn my alerts off. Someone subscribed to my YouTube channel, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching this designer as he kind of moves up and uh, hopefully starts showing us some, some really cool courses. And he started off really nicely with this one. So awesome job. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And again, if you are interested in course critiques, please look into my membership options on my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, we still we have a couple more course critiques lined up in the next few days. So you should see uh, some more activity on the channel. Okay, guys, thank you. See you later.